Shumrabyug. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sure Look, Sure Listen, the podcast that takes a pop at culture. Sure Look, Sure Listen. Sure Look, Sure Listen. Sure Look, Sure Listen. Sure Look, Sure Listen. Sure Look. Sure Listen. Sure Look, Sure Listen. Sure Look, Sure Listen. Oh, very good, Benjamin. Welcome back also to Benjamin, who's back after we had special guest fill in last minute panic mode Shane Courtney last week. Tell me about it. Tell me about it, Michael. I won't, Benjamin. I won't tell you about it. There is a whole podcast episode you can listen to. But sure, <laughs> look at Ben. Yeah. There's no time for any of that because this week we're taking a look. It looks like the drought is over, Ben, because this week we're taking a look at Bullet Train, the new film from John Wick. We're also having a look at Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, Ben. I think mm-hmm. the biggest secret is going to be how did his fashion sense go downhill so quickly. Also, Ben, <laughs> we're having a look at something called The Adam Project. And I've been having a look at All of Us Are Dead, which sounds very grim, but is actually a good program. So listen, Michael, if that wasn't enough, and it definitely is, because the, it, the, the drought is in fact over and we're in the middle of a deluge, Michael. A deluge, Ben, a, a deluge, deluge of content. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bloody sopping in content, Ben. So, dripping in content, Michael. So sop, I'm sopping wet in content. <laughs> listen, if that was enough, um, it's too bad. You have to listen to a bit more because, Michael, this week we have seen possibly the biggest movie of the year thus far. Oh, they're easily the biggest movie of the year thus far, Benjamin. Yes, The Batman. Matt Reeves, The Batman. Matt Reeves, The Batman. And that has led us on to a new topic, Michael, which is too many Batmen. Too, too many, many bats in the belfry. Of... We're going to be taking a look at all the weird kind of Batman in alternate universes because DC loves an alternate universe, Michael. Yeah, they love an alternate universe. They love a Batman in S and M gear. Yeah, they do. They do indeed. Well, hold on a second. They love a Batman in slightly more S and M gear. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably a very accurate. <laughs> now, that, now that I think about it, Ben. Yeah. Benjamin, go on. Why in the hell is John Wick Brad Pitt now? <laughs> it's very interesting, isn't it? Um, it, it? This is this is the return of puppy dog Brad Pitt, Michael, as I like to call him, kind of lovable, dopey Brad Pitt in mm. any film. And I will I will watch it, Michael. I will sit there and I will watch puppy Brad Pitt on screen. I'm just like, yeah, I'm all for this. I love weird, inept, dorky Brad Pitt, and he's not inept, obviously, Michael. He's a very skilled man. You can see it. In the film. But he's he's trying to change his life, Michael. He's a leper trying to change his spots by the looks of things. Yes, Benjamin, because the one thing that we haven't had a deluge of recently, Ben, is reformed assassins trying to get out of the business and having to do one last hit. Michael, I don't uh, think I've ever uh, seen that. Oh, no, wait, John Wick. John Wick. What about the film Kate, Ben? Yeah, but but after those two, Michael, I don't think I've ever seen the the the, the that. Oh no, wait! There's every other film that's come out in the last every five years. Every other film that has come out in the last five years. What was that recent one that was like Kate? Was it Kate? Am I thinking of Kate? I think, I think you're well, just thinking of Kate. Am I thinking of Kate? It was Kate the one with Mary Elizabeth Winstead? Um, yeah, that's Kate. Was it? What was the one? Uh, what was the one with um, Kate Beckinsale? That was Surge. Jolt. 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 <laughs> yeah. And what was the one Just, before that? I think it was Atomic Blonde. Anna, maybe? I don't know. It could have oh, been. I, I, mean, I can't keep... Take your pick. Take, take a vaguely Russian name, mm. and you can call your film that, or take some kind of electrical malfunction, and you can call yeah. it that either. Surge. Jolt. Surge, jolt. Yeah. I guarantee you there's someone from the Jolt team that is going to make a sequel called Surge. Like, that's fucking gold. Right, that's, great, that's great. <laughs> Capacitor blowout. Capacitor blowout. <laughs> Crossed wires. Cross wires, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ohm. Ohm. Just the film Ohm. Starring anyway. Samuel L. Jackson as a, an assassin with one last hit to do before he can leave the business forever. Anyway, Michael, yes. now we've got Bullet Train. <laughs> yes, what's unique about this one appears to be that it's on a train. And it's not named after a Russian lady. <laughs> no, it's not called named after a Russian lady. It's on a train. So in case we weren't sure where it was, it's on a bullet train. It's on a bullet train, Michael. They've made it very clear that it's on a bullet train. Mm. And there's a case, Michael, a MacGuffin. Yes. And everybody wants the case. And it, it looks like Brad Pitt's the man who seems to be most in control of the case for a bit. A little bit, at least, Benjamin. Oh, but Michael, Michael, come here to me. He's got a dark past, Michael, by the looks of things. I bet you he does. 
Well, he's the trying to get Brad rid Pitt, of it. You mean? Huh? The actor Brad Pitt. It's the all, actor Brad Pitt. It's well, only a matter of time. Does. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before we find out what he's into. But yeah, it's it's the return of the character that we see Brad Pitt play in pretty much everything in his early career, Michael. It's the it's the Mexican Brad Pitt. Not literally a Mexican Brad Pitt, but Brad Pitt from Senior, the film Senior The Mexican. Pitt. Oh, okay. By right. Gore Verbinski, which is a very good film, Michael. I've never seen it, Ben. I oh, think it's Michael's the only film I haven't seen. It's a hidden 90s gem. Anyway, um, it's not a bullet train, lots of assassins. It gives serious smoke and aces vibe, Michael. Um, it does, doesn't it, Ben? And it's called Bullet Train, because bu- it's a bullet train, but there are also going to be bullets on the train. It's a train full of bullets. There'll be lots of bullets, Michael. I'm not sure if I didn't see a Michael Shannon doing a, a slightly Asian makeup gig. I was like, oh, what? I hope not. I hope what? not, Benjamin. Because um, I'm not here for the fall of Michael Shannon, Michael. I enjoy him when he pops up. Benjamin, I had another surprise appearance from Aaron Taylor Johnson. Um, yes, noted uh, victim of grooming, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's there. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Oh, yeah. No use. Um, I Look, Aaron Taylor Johnson is one of those interesting ones. He pops up sometimes and I'm like, why? Why did you cast him? Why is Aaron Taylor Johnson in this? We should have an episode, called, Ben, called Why is Aaron Taylor Johnson in this? <laughs> That's definitely an episode. It seems un- unusually mean for this podcast to target a single actor for their mediocrity. But in this case, I'm all for it. Why is why Aaron is he Taylor in Johnson in this? Why was he in Kingsman? Why is he in this? Why is he British? <laughs> What's he doing? He, he is British, isn't he? Is he British? He is British. He's a little Get British fellow. Out of town. I thought he was a wee American lad. No, I think he's a little British fellow, I think. Benjamin. Go on. For all of our mockery of the film Bullet Train, it does look quite good, though, doesn't it? It looks very enjoyable, Michael. A light little assassination romp. Um, and we'll mm. both go see it, I'd imagine. Ah, uh, probably. Ah, uh, probably, yeah. Michael. It's not uh, out probably. till July. That's so far away, Benjamin. Have you seen the trailer for The Bubble? Uh, oh, yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? Um, it's a new film from Netflix, Ben, about the trials and tribulations of making a film. Yeah, so it's Judd Apatow in COVID, Michael. In, in COVID, COVID times. Um, yeah, exactly. Which isn't real anymore. Um, it's all gone. It's over. It's, it's all over. over. Um, we're on to World War Three now, so I look forward yeah. to the Bubble 2, um, where they make a film in the Ukraine. Um, oh, very good. But, uh, uh, not in the Ukraine, in Ukraine, sorry. Yeah. Why did we call it the Ukraine for so long, Ben, but then we stopped? Because we got used to the USSR, I think, and then realised, mm. oh, actually, that's a very Western-centric uh, point of view, and we're probably wrong. Classic the Russia. Classic the Russia. Uh, but anyway, come here to me. The bubble looks interesting, Michael. That's got Karen Gillan in it. It's got Karen Gillan in it, and it's got lots of other famous people doing acting. David Duchovny, Michael. David Duchovny, what's he doing in it? Yeah, Keegan-Michael Key, Michael. Is in it, yeah, exactly. You said Michael twice there. Benjamin, you yes. know who's probably in it? Yes. Aaron Taylor Johnson, I'd, I'd be willing to take oh, a punt he's probably one of the dinosaurs. Johnson. He's probably one of the dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, dragons, I think. But uh, Oh, yeah. they're dragons, is that what they're they dragons, are? Yeah. All dragons. I know is it's a cliff beast, Michael. That's what I've been told. Um, so this was this was soft launched, Michael. Yes, go Soft on. launch. You see, you see, I've been doing a HubSpot marketing course, Michael, so now I've got phrases oh, like have you? soft launch in my record. Oh, I thought that was just your lovemaking technique. <laughs> <laughs> the soft launch. <laughs> it's worked well for me so far, Michael. Don't knock it. Um, c- come here to me. But uh, Ka- Karen Gillan put up a trailer for her new film, Cliff Beast 6. Oh, very uh, clever. A bit of cunning marketing yes, genius. Yes, a little promo thing on her Instagram. In real life, Michael, but meta, metally speaking, it's not It's not her at all. It's not a real no, it's film. The, it's the actress that she's playing. It, does she play Karen Gillan? Uh, I don't know. It's not. I, I assume so. I assume she is actually playing. Oh, no, because there's other names being thrown around. I'm not sure, Michael. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I saw the trailer for it anyway. Uh, it's Judd Apatow, which which makes me hesitant. Okay, you loved the 40-year-old virgin, though. Uh, no, I, I didn't, Michael. Um, I don't, no, I not don't. that film. That guy you no. met. <laughs> yeah, he was a nice bloke. <laughs> nice uh, fella, yeah. Mick, I think his name was. I did a podcast oh, with him for a no. couple of years. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. by my own petard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, you got me. Uh, that was really good. Uh, but anyway, it, it's set in the manic kind of uh, restriction-heavy times of COVID, and it's about, I suppose, the psychological toll it took on the movie industry. It does whack a little bit, Michael, of oh, boo hoo, the celebrities aren't very happy, but I'm sure it'll be funny. 
Um, sure, it'll be funny. I don't know if it'll be good, but it'll probably have a few moments. It'll probably have a few yucks in there, Michael. It seems to be in the school of "Don't Look Up." So Adam McKay made "Don't Look Up," and it feels it feels it has a very similar mockumentary satirical tone to to that from the trailer. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah I can see it. I can see yeah. it. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I had I I got a, a strong sense of that from it, Michael. Hmm. Look, mm. Benjamin, we'll give it a watch. Benjamin. Yeah. What? Speaking of the deluge. Yes, the deluge, Michael. Do you think we've had sometimes too many films from a particular series? Oh, uh, Michael, sometimes we've had a lot of films from a series and other times we've had films rammed down our throats from a th- particular series. And then other Go times, on. Michael, we've had completely a completely different set of films from a series that belong to the same universe, but really, Michael, tonally, stylistically, power-wise, Everything-wise is 100% different. So much so that it may as well be an alternate universe, Michael. Yeah, so you're talking about the Human Centipede series there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's it's much maligned 85th sequel, uh, The Human Butterfly Finds Himself on a Trip to Cancun. <laughs> That's good improv, Ben. Yeah, Centipedes thanks. and butterflies aren't connected in any way. But I mean, okay, I'll, I'll accept it, Benjamin. Oh, well, that was my argument, ben- Michael. That was my premise. Very, very clever. Very yes, clever. and. Ben. Very good. Yes, and Ben. Yes, and Ben. (laughs) Yes, and Dumbledore is coming back and he's got some secrets for us. Oh, listen, Michael, have you seen the trailer? I haven't, Benjamin. I assume that everyone's doing wizarding at each other. Uh, So, Michael, uh, Mad Steph, I mean, Johnny Mickelson, um, is is back in the role of uh, Grindelwald. Uh, So we, we... we, we lost John Depp to Mans Mickelson. Is Mans Mickelson Grindelwald uh, now? Mans Mickelson is Grindelwald now, which, Michael, actually makes me excited to see this film. Is Mans Mickelson really Grindelwald? <laughs> yeah, he's been recast. I probably should have watched this, Ben. I probably should have watched this trailer. That's big news. So it's it, we have about, in fairness, Grindelwald has been played by three different actors now. Uh, Colin Farrell <laughs> yeah, the, the Farrell. first film. Johnny Depp in the second. And now Mans Mickelson in the third um, well, I suppose, Benjamin, it's it's far from the least believable thing in that series that someone can change their appearance. Yeah, true. It's it's absolutely fine. I think he's bringing a gravitas to it already, Michael. I, I genuinely believe that Mad Mickelson could be a giant cult leader that inspires wizards to kind of a death cult vibe. I, I get that now. I'm like, yeah, Mad Mickelson could do that. Yeah, Ben, wasn't, didn't he do exactly that in um, Doctor Strange? He did, but he wasn't given enough screen time, Michael. He wasn't I feel given that, enough screen time. Um, he was Casilius, Ben. I, th- I feel like Casilius was a real waste of Mads Mikkelsen. Mm, a real waste of Mads Mikkelsen. That's our other new podcast coming up after Why is Aaron Taylor Johnson in this? <laughs> Why is Aaron Taylor Johnson in this? A real waste of Mads Mikkelsen. But come here to me. Uh, we're back in the world of uh, Fantastic Beasts, which is the prequel to the Harry Potter universe. And Michael, once yes. again, yes, I think it's more interesting than the Harry Potter movies. Go on. Now, not in terms of anything I'd actually give a fuck about. Oh, no. You, you hate, hate wizards, Ben. You hate them. In terms of the style, the the powers, the use of magic, because technology has moved on so much since the first ever Harry Potter movie, Michael. Go on. It's just a much cooler film to look at. Like, the use of magic is more entertaining. They can pull off different moves. And all these wizards are ridiculously overpowered, Michael. They're all... Everyone's so, everyone's so overpowered in this, to the point of... It makes the adventure from the first Harry Potter seem a bit pointless. It, it, but that's, that's the thing, Michael. Because, come here to me. Mads Mikkelsen mm. is launching an anti-Muggle revolution, Michael. And wiping out half of the Muggle world, in, or yeah. attempting to from what we can see, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who the fuck gives a crap about Voldemort? I know, but that's the funny thing, you see, because, I mean, this whole situation is like, to, to use a real-world parallel, Ben, if if this was World War Two, if this was the Wizarding World's World War Two, mm-hmm. then the whole plot of the Harry Potter film series would be the same as Vladimir Putin invading a school and fighting a boy. Yeah, unprovoked, really. When yeah, <laughs> he probably would. He's, he's, he probably would. Yeah. Benjamin. Something about bald lads with a complex. I don't know. Who else is in it, Benjamin? Hey. Um, so, What's this, uh, taking shots at Mick Week? No. It's I'm bloody, shots. I'll invade your taking, sovereign territory take, now in a minute, Benjamin. It's a Putin week. Settle down. Oh, right, okay. Um, That's fair enough. Come here to me. Uh, uh, your man is back. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> 
Oh, that fella, yeah. I know the one you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> the lad who wrote Fantastic Beasts, the book. What's his name? J.R.R. Tolkien. See, I don't remember, because this was launched as the Fantastic Beasts series, but it's quickly become the Dumbledore series, and it's yeah, very it was, hard to remember. It was launched as a Newt Scarmander series. <laughs> yeah, and now... Is he in Who it? cares? He's there. He's still. It's still about Fantastic Beasts, but it's not. Is he so. still going? Ooh, ooh. Where's all the? Where have all the beasts gone? Where have I put them? Where have yeah, I put the beasts? What's his name again? Eddie. Uh, Eddie Redmayne. Ed, Eddie Redmayne. Oh, that was surprisingly good from the the vaults of my memory there. Um, no, I said it. Ben. No, I know, but I got the first name, Michael, and we couldn't oh, have done it good, okay. without you getting the without me getting the first name. This is why we have a podcast together, Michael. We're better oh, very together. Good. You remember half of it and I'll remember the rest. Yeah, that's good. Um, ben, who plays Dumbledore? Uh, Jude Law. No, you were supposed to say Jude, Ben, and then I was going to say Law. Oh, I was trying to, I was sorry, trying to I run with the, the bit. bit, Michael. I was doing I a yes and. Bit. I've dropped the bit. Um, ah, fuck it. The character of Mr. Kowalski is back as a muggle, um, taking on the wizarding world. He's given a wand, Michael, in the trailer. Can so muggles we, use wands? App- apparently so. Apparently. We're just allowing that now. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? That turns the whole thing upside down. It just breaks the entire universe, Michael. We're getting more cool 1920s American wizards. Oh, yeah. Um, what are they doing? They're, doing pro- some prohibitions? Doing some prohibitions, doing some American things, Michael. Are they doing the Lindy Bop? Uh, probably. There's probably a little bit of the Lindy Bop going around, yeah. Are, are they wearing a flapper dress, Ben? I'd say we'll probably see one or two wizards in a flapper dress, Michael. I don't see are why they, not. Are they heading towards the Great Depression? I, 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 in terms of having actually to watch the movie, I'd imagine we're all heading for a Great Depression. <laughs> but you bloody got them, Ben. Benjamin. Yeah. Is this film going to explain why Dumbledore stopped dressing like a dapper man about town and started dressing like a mad old wizard? It probably won't, Michael, because you see, one of the things that we can always say about J.K. Rowling is she's very inconsistent. Um, she doesn't mm. really, she doesn't really have to come up with reasons anymore, Michael. She just kind of throws things out every once in a while. Did you know that Dumbledore was gay? Do you know? No, I, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> Do you know that uh, Dumbledore used to dress well? <laughs> oh yeah, that's even more of a surprise, to be honest. Do you know that Dumbledore had a half brother who originally owned the Phoenix that Dumbledore then went on to possess? Yes, I think that was in the books, wasn't it? I don't know. I, I, I can't was, remember, yeah. Michael. It was so long ago. I think um, that was in the books, Ben. Look, Michael, you and I do a pop culture podcast once a week, so I'll probably oh, go watch yeah, it. Oh, yeah, really? Where yeah. can I listen to it? Uh, you can listen to it on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. I oh. feel like it. Yeah. yeah. That's it from us this week, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we'll see you next week uh, when <laughs> we when more, more deluge content has come out. But anyway, Michael, we're going to have to go watch it. Go on. Because we do a pop culture podcast and it's inescapable and that's just the way it's going to be. That is entirely true, Benjamin. Yeah. Benjamin. Yeah, come on. Speaking of having to go watch things. Yeah. What in the holy heck is The Adam Project? <laughs> the Adam Project is coming out on Netflix, Michael, so we can watch that at home. We don't have to go anywhere to watch that. Oh, very good. Exactly. So I can watch it at a time other than midnight. A time other than midnight. So this is, this is a... <laughs> we'll get to that in a second, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, the the new film in the the Ryan Reynolds Netflix contract. I don't know how many oh, films he's got I've now. I've seen of them. this. Um, I don't know this how many films he's got now. Them. No, no, no. The new trailer dropped this week. No, it didn't it drop ages ago? This is no, the one no. where he's himself from the future. Yeah, but the new trailer dropped this week, Michael. A, a second trailer. A second trailer. Oh, go on. Is that right? Yeah, and it's uh, it's about. Uh, let, let let's see if you've heard this before. Right uh, now, hold on, Benjamin. Yeah. There's a certain confidence which is disappearing from your eyes. Are you sure this wasn't several weeks ago? No, no. This is, no there's no confidence disappeared from my okay. eyes. I promise it, you this was dropped this week. Is this the one where he has the lightsaber at the end? We got a teaser, Michael, at the... Ve- no, this, we, get a, we get a full lightsaber fight in this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I no, think that we was got a, a teaser ago. a couple of weeks ago, Michael. Okay. All and right, now okay, we've got the you. trailer. I believe you. Okay, go on. It's the hype machine of Hollywood, Michael. Hype, hype. Hype, hype. hype. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, Michael, come here to me. Yes. Yes. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if Ryan Reynolds played an incredibly competent, charming, witty man mm. who realizes that something's gone horribly wrong and then has to go sort it out, but in the process has the rug pulled out from under Michael, and it turns out that that strong facade is all exactly that a facade. Oh, Benjamin, you're describing the film Free Guy. Yes, I'm describing the film Free Guy. Or, or I'm every other the Ryan film, Reynolds. Deadpool. Yeah, <laughs> or every other film Ryan Reynolds has ever been in. 
Yeah, so this is uh, the Adam Project, where Ryan Reynolds is a competent, badass future soldier, um, mm. with his with his girlfriend Zoe Saldana. Oh, Zoe Saldana! Zoe Saldana's in it. She's his girlfriend, and Michael. They have to go back in time because it turns out that Ryan Reynolds pops. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo is the the kind of uh, the the idea point or the genesis point for time travel. Oh, um, he's the good. man that kind of comes up with the concept that eventually delivers time travel. Oh, called, that's going it. Called, oh, the Adam Project. Very good. Um, very clever. And they have to go back in time because there's an evil corporation trying to stop them. Michael, a bit of a Skynet moment. And uh, yeah, he has to work with his younger self, Michael. Um, and it's been it's been hailed, Michael. Early early reviews of this film have been hailed as a family drama masquerading as a block uh, blockbuster. So apparently, it's very good. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. It's got good action pieces because you've got like two action veterans, a Ryan Reynolds and a Zoe Saldana. Oh, I thought you were going to say Ryan Reynolds and the small boy who plays young Ryan Reynolds. Yes, he can't be a veteran, Michael. He's a small boy who plays young he's Ryan a, Reynolds. He's only a little small boy, exactly. Yeah. How would he, he wouldn't know any of the moves. So uh, at the core of it, Michael, is the fact that uh, young Ryan Reynolds uh, has lost his father. Um, mm, he's probably gone into the future in time travel. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of time traveling stuff, reconnecting with your father, mending the relationship that was broken, seeing your younger relationship with your father through a new lens as you get older, and possibly oh. gaining more empathy for them. Oh, very clever. All yeah. very clever stuff. All very clever stuff, Michael. Um, so there's, there's, there's going to be a little bit of that, Michael, and we're probably going to watch that too because we do a pop. It's going to be on the podcast. Netflix, is it? It's not going to be in the cinema. I don't have to go and see it at midnight. I, I might just knock around to your house at midnight, Michael, and oh, tell you very stick good. It on. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do it. We'll just really suffer. We'll make ourselves suffer for the craft. Benjamin. Yes. <laughs> speaking of suffering for the craft, we did an episode a few weeks ago called Korean Dramas Sure Are About Things. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago now, Michael. But yeah, sure. No, oh, it wasn't, was it? No, it was only a couple of months ago. Uh, um, okay. If you say it so, was, pandemic for sure, time. For sure. For sure. It, no, it was pandemic time. Yeah, because it was. we did it about Squid Game, Ben. The Squid yeah, Game. Yeah, we did. Oh, we did, actually. You're right. Yeah. And, um, and what was that one called? Hellbound. Hellbound. Oh yeah, that old fella. Yeah, and I tell you what, Ben, the Koreans are at it again. The the Koreans are in fact at it again. At it again. Benjamin, they are at it nearly as much as the Brits. Oh, oh that's going to get us cancelled. Um, <laughs> of all the, the Koreans, terrible ben, things we say on that podcast, that's the end. <laughs> the Koreans, Ben, it appears they're never not at it. Benjamin. Yeah. They've done another hit Netflix pro program, the old Koreans. Right. And it's called... Um, all of us are dead. Oh. And i tell you what it's about, Ben. You'll enjoy what it's about. Go on. It's one of your favourites. Go on. It's bloody zombies, Ben. Oh, Michael, I never would have guessed that a Korean film or TV series would focus <laughs> on zombies. <laughs> it's about zombies, Ben, and they're coming to get you. But this time they're coming to get you in school. Oh, no, not school. Yeah, one of the worst places, Ben. Oh. So everyone's just in school. Just okay. being Korean kids. And then all of a sudden there's fucking zombies everywhere. Oh, that'd be awful, Michael. Can you imagine being in school, just minding your own business, drifting off in maths class, and then all of a sudden, oh, fuck, yeah. there's a zombie. Well, Benjamin, that's the thing. It's uh, Koreans, f by hook or by crook, are quite culturally different to us. And you wouldn't be drifting off to sleep in maths class in high school in Korea, I tell you what. Oh, would you not? No, Benjamin, you wouldn't You wouldn't have a hope of that. I wouldn't get away with that, would I not? You wouldn't, Ben. You'd end up on the streets. They'd probably feed me to some zombies, would they? No, well... You'll have to watch the show to find out, Benjamin. But it's very good. Go on, you've been it's watching a, the show there, so give me, give me a, give me a mid-season review there. I've been watching the show, Benjamin, and it's very good. Okay, good review, Benjamin. What I'm going to ask you to do is imagine mm -hmm. every zombie survival trope you've ever heard. Yes, but done in a high school. Okay, yeah, I got it. That's it. That's what it is. That's what it All is. All right, that's that sounds interesting. But it is interesting because it's well done. Oh, well, that, see, that's the most important part, Michael. I think people lose sight of that sometimes. It doesn't matter how many times something is done. It only matters that it's done well a couple of times. You just do it well, you see, because, Ben, there's a lot of... Give me a zombie trope, Ben. Um, hiding a bite. Oh, classic, yes. There's yeah. loads of that. Loads of that. Um, there's loads of people hiding bites and then friends realising, your hands are very cold. What's wrong with you, you cold bastard? You, <laughs> you, cold, <laughs> you cold bastard. Uh, come here to me. Uh, a reluctant zombie bashing because it's someone you used to love. Oh, common as muck, Ben. <laughs> Happening all the time. But the thing is, right, when you're doing that in a movie, yeah. you've, got, you've got five minutes to get it done. Unless it's your whole movie. Right. 
but you've got five minutes to get it done. But in this, you can have half an episode about the hidden bite. Oh, you could just and give half it, an episode oh. about, you know, half an episode about killing your best friend, even though they're zombies now. Oh, it's a classic. I, I often think about killing my co-host if he turned into a zombie. Oh, no. I would I would only hope you would do me that favour, Ben. I think, like I, think, ben. I, think I, I think I'd be screwed, Michael. I think you'd be a very competent zombie. I think I'd be doomed. I'd bloody get you, Ben, in a, in yeah. a second. Or I'd try and kill you because you just were a bit pale that day. <laughs> you know, like I haven't been I haven't been bitten though, but like I can't take the risk, Ben. It's, it's for okay, your own everyone. good. I got him. It's for your own good. <laughs> Benjamin. Yeah. Unlike other zombie programs, let's say The Walking Dead, this one manages to keep pace with being exciting zombie stuff going on all the time and having the human drama. That's They're new. not two separate things, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's not just a human drama where there happen to be zombies. Yeah, like a like a <clears throat> Walking Dead. Exactly, Ben. And it has all of the high school tropes as well, like a love triangle, which oh. becomes a love square. Michael, so much stuff going on in this. Oh, Benjamin, it's great. I it sounds good. I like as you know, I'm a very squeamish man, Michael, so I probably won't watch it. Oh, Benjamin, it would be very frightening for you. Very frightening, Michael. Um, but it's okay because I'll probably knock around to your house at twelve o'clock. And just, just hold pop your over hand. at tw- yeah. Pop over at twelve o'clock, Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah. Speaking of popping over to my house at twelve o'clock for no good reason. Go on. <laughs> we have seen the film The Batman. Yeah, Jesus Christ, we have. <laughs> um, we have. Sorry, that makes it seem like it's a very bad film, um, ladies and gentlemen. I, the reason I'm saying Jesus Christ <laughs> is because Michael and I have been suffering from a condition known as hubris. Um, yes, for hubris. Quite a we've long got a time. big dose of it. Big huge <laughs> dose of hubris. I'm absolutely sapping in hubris. <laughs> Dripping in hubris, so to speak. Um, and uh, I can't remember which one of us came up with this. Uh, Benjamin. Frankly brilliant notion. <laughs> I'm sitting here in a puddle of my own hubris. I'd say you are. I'd say mm. you are. Um, oh no, that's just piss. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, it's just piss. I've pissed myself. I'll be uh, back in a second. <laughs> no, my God. All right, no. I'm back. I've and there goes this. the tone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Um, I think I think we've just jumped the shark. Um, oh, very good. Or pissed on the shark, one or the other. Um, but come here to me. One of us had the 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 genius level idea mm. of being like, do you know what? We should be we should be one of the first people to see the Batman in Ireland yeah. and Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. We should be. We should go to the midnight screening podcast. Yeah, of the Batman. Mm. Terrible idea. It's very long. <laughs> it's three hours long, Michael. Three hours long, Ben. I have to say, Benjamin, we went to see it in the Lighthouse Cinema here in Dublin's Fair City. Yes, where the girls and are all right. Yeah. Oh, very good. There goes the tone now. There goes the listeners, <laughs> there, ben. there goes the tone. That was much worse than taking a shot at the Brits, Ben, who were always at it. Do you reckon? Benjamin. Yeah. Benjamin, drop it. Drop it. This isn't a yes and moment. Okay. Um, We went to see it in the Lighthouse. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, all credit to them, they didn't play any trailers. Nope. <laughs> Very good. Right into it, boots on the ground. Straight into it, <laughs> boots on the ground, straight into it, which was a merciful relief. Uh, it was very necessary after a three hour Oh film. my God, Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah. We're going to talk about it for about 10 minutes, aren't we? Maybe 15 minutes, we're going to talk about The Batman. Matt Reeves' f- new <laughs> program, knows, The Michael, Batman. There's a lot to talk about. There's, there's a some... lot to talk about, that's what I was saying. But, in a way, it's quite refreshing, this yeah in that it's not your typical superhero film and i'm not gonna say at the start we might spoil a couple of things yeah here but it's not that kind of film no it it, it, you would be hard pressed to spoil it i i think you would michael i think i think it's it's blissfully free of you know superhero hype culture it's yeah hype 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 yeah Hi, it's, hi. it's it's not a Marvel film in that way. It yeah, we're not require certain twists. Yeah, we're not going to Ben try and talk into your microphone there because it's going to be sorry very all over the place. Yeah, uh, Benjamin. Yeah, it's going to be. It's it's not going to depend on. Oh, I wonder if Michael Keaton's going to show up in the third act. No. Or I wonder who's really his father. Yes. Or I wonder what celebrity stunt casting. None of that. It's it's the antidote to Spider Man No Way Home. It is indeed, 100%. There's no multiversal shenanigans here, Michael. Yeah, there's no other superheroes, Ben. No, there's only the Batman. 
It's just a crime film. Yes, 100%. And boy, oh boy, Michael, what a crime, what a crime. film it is. What a, what a crime it is. Benjamin. <laughs> Go on. You loved it, I think. I absolutely, unequivocally love this film, Michael. And since seeing it, I have only grown to love it more. Oh, that's very interesting. Yes, it's grown on me. I liked it, Ben. That's because you're wrong, Michael. It's okay. I I liked it a lot. Yeah, okay, that's better. That's... I did like it a lot, but it is not unequivocally a great film, in my opinion. Get ben, out of here. W- Get leave. Without spoiling it, it's overly long. It's too long. It's too long. The tone is a bit all over the place. I quite like that. <laughs> I, I don't really have necessarily a problem with it. And, Ben... It has one of the worst and most superfluous fourth acts I've ever seen in oh, my life. It's true, Michael. It I did, refuse it, to call it a third act, Ben. No, it's it's a fifth act, I think, by it's the count of the film. They've put another act in, and the act seems to have come from an entirely different film. I, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, how do we speak about this without... It's well, we, we'll, we will get into spoilers in a couple of minutes. But okay. Benjamin, well, what did you think about the performances? Uh, surprisingly excellent. <laughs> I uh, thought the performances were quite good. Uh, surprisingly good. Robert Battenson. Uh, yes, he, Robert Battenson. Better to be known. Um, it's Another fun. little English fellow. Okay, hang on. I'm going to have to pause You've this. You've got a little doggo there, second. Ben. <laughs> yes, I do. Sorry. Just you want to be on the podcast. <laughs> give me one second. I won't give you any seconds, Ben. <laughs> Just t- tell her, ask her a question about Batman. I will. I'll what did she think about Batman? about Batman? What did she think? She says, I would have liked to have seen it, but 12 o'clock was far too late. I don't know what too she was late. thinking. Too late for her little bedtime. Benjamin. Yeah. I thought the performances were very good. I thought that noted little English fellow Robert Pattinson was quite good. Yeah. he. Benjamin. One of the again, there's no spoilers in this really per se. One of the big questions, one of the one of the eternal questions about Batman is are you casting a good Bat Wayne or are you casting a good Bruce Man? I think you know it, it is the eternal question Michael and sometimes we've gotten a perfect Bruce Wayne and other times we've gotten a perfect Batman I, mm, mm. It's, uh, it's hard to do and, well here, here's what I was going to say Ben yeah this is a Batman film Oh, so much so. This is this there's, is who's that Bruce very Wayne? Little guy? Bruce Wayne in this. There's <laughs> very little Bruce Wayne. He's a recluse, Michael. He's a recluse, which we've seen before. We've seen that in Christian Bale. Yeah, sometimes. Um, but he is, yeah, not a character really, is he? No, he's very much a facade across the board. So much so that it's it's almost a theme, Michael. Mm. This is called Ben the Batman for a reason. Yes, it's not called Bruce Wayne puts on a costume and heads out. Yeah. Bruce Wayne man. Bruce Wayne man. It is not. No, it isn't. He's he's not in it, Benjamin. Benjamin. Go on. On the other hand, Selena Kyle is Selena Kyle, not Catwoman. She's not Catwoman at all, Michael. There's not even a hint. There's a couple of hints. Oh, there's there's one hint at the end. There's one or two. There's a couple of hints, Ben. She has a bit of a sip of some milk. Oh, she does. She does actually. She has a little drink of and milk. She- And she's got a rake of cats. She's got a rake of cats, Michael. She's got a a rake of cats, Ben. And Benjamin, she calls them the bat and the cat. She does at the end. So there is, but she she is Selina Kyle, though. She's not Catwoman. Yeah. So it continues the long tradition. Exactly. It continues the long tradition of not calling Selina Kyle Catwoman, established by Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. I think think it's the same with the Penguin, isn't it? I don't think he's ever necessarily... I don't know if he's called the Penguin. I don't think they do directly. Right. He's Aussie for yeah, or most Oz. of the film, I think. Benjamin. Yeah. The Penguin is famously played by Colin Farrell in grotesque makeup. M- Michael, I could not get over this. It's Benjamin. I was very upset, to be honest. Oh. I was upset on your behalf oh. in many ways. <laughs> you because. I know exactly where this is going. <laughs> oh, there's nothing funnier than a joke when the other person already knows the punchline. <laughs> Benjamin, I think that Colin Farrell owes. He's doing a great disservice to ugly people. Because <laughs> now the old goes. At least in the past, when you had an ugly character, you could get an ugly actor in, and there was work for the uggos. But now they're getting attractive people to play the ugly characters. In makeup. 
Attractive people in makeup play. There's loads of ugly people who'd love to be in a film. They'd love a chance to be in a film. They'd fucking love it. And no, hashtag me too, Ben, I think. Oh, boo. Is that me too? Michael. Is that what me too was about? Representation? Boo, Michael. <laughs> shame Are we on representing? You. How, what about equal re- representation for ugly people, Ben? Well, we can start a new hashtag. Uh, hashtag I'm ugly too. Um, <laughs> okay, you do. You start and see where that gets us. Uh, but yeah, so I, aside from the fact that he's stealing jobs from good, hardworking, ugly actors, Michael, uh, I yeah. thought he was quite good. He was one of the most was, enjoyable parts of the film. <laughs> he was very good in it, Ben. But I'm just heartbroken for all those ugly actors. You have Jared Leto. Dressing up as ugly people. You have fucking Colin Farrell dressing up as ugly people. Everyone's at it. Do you, do you know what's worse about the, the Jared Leto end of it is he's unnecessarily playing ugly, overweight characters who weren't actually ugly and overweight. <laughs> I know. They're like, well, this guy, let's make him more grotesque so we can cast Jared Leto. So he can and be silly go, and what? aim for an Oscar. What? 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 He, but he's not grotesque and overweight. Jared Leto wants him to be grotesque and overweight. Get it, yeah. get it done. Uh, Colin Farrell said that he tested out the prosthetic makeup by going down to Starbucks to see if people would recognise him. Make eye contact with him. (laughs) To which I was like, how famous do you think you are? Do you think people could tell by your eyes? Like, it's so much makeup and prosthetics. Figure it out, Farreller. Figure it out. Have you never seen Undercover Boss, Farreller? I was like, Jesus Christ, Colin. (gasps) Benjamin. Yeah. I thought Zoe Kravitz was a highlight. Uh, so Kravitz was excellent in it, Michael. Um, not uh, interesting. Go on. Not necessarily essential as a Catwoman. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Really, she was a bit of a damsel in distress in, uh, in a couple of times. Yeah, a very good character by herself. Could have been any character, really. It just so happened that you've got a, a very well-known Batman female character called the Catwoman, and Matt Reeves went, "All right, we'll do the Catwoman then." Let's yeah, the Catwoman. Benjamin Catwoman. Funnily enough, at this stage, Ben, I, I saw this on Twitter this morning. Catwoman has now been played in live action by nine actresses. Has she? Yeah, see how classic nine lives, Ben. Oh, um, so that's it then. But have any of them been Catwoman? And I would suggest, Ben, that this one was the closest we've seen on screen to 80s to now Catwoman from the comics. Hmm. Because I tell yeah. you what, Michelle Pfeiffer, Michelle Pfeiffer was great, Ben, an iconic representation, an iconic performance. Yes. But she wasn't playing Catwoman from the comics. No, she was playing Catwoman Tim Burton's from the Catwoman. comics. She was just playing some mad lunatic who was dressed in a cat suit, Ben. Yeah. Catwoman from the comics is a cat burglar who comes from a, a, a weird combination of privilege and downtrodden life. And yeah. she wasn't even a cat burglar, Ben. She was just a lunatic. Yeah, she was just a bit mental, wasn't she? She was, and then, um, and then Selena Kyle from bloody Christopher Nolan films. She was a upmarket jewel thief. One of the worst representations. I can say this comfortably now, years later, and having assessed it properly. One of the worst representations of Catwoman I've ever seen on screen. Whereas this one, Ben, was very much what I think the modern comics have been doing with Catwoman for the last few years. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But a bit of an origin story. Um, it's it's Batman Year One, um, Selina Kyle with a little bit of sanitization, because um, in the in the original comic by Frank Miller, she's a prostitute. Yes. Um, and I think Matt Reeves probably looked at that and went, "Well, there's no need to push that particular." There's no um, need to flat out say that. There's no need to flat out say that or push that. So I'm just going to make her a uh, cocktail waitress in a very skeevy uh, bar. <laughs> Gangster dive bar. Gangster mm. dive bar. And she happens to be a burglar on the side. Mm. Mm. Very good. Benjamin. Yes. Um, and it has a villain. It does. The Riddler, Ben. The Riddler's excellent, Michael. A sinister modern take on the Riddler. A sinister modern take. A little bit of saw. Sprinkled on top, a little bit of seven, a whole heaping dose of seven, if we're honest. A little bit of saw, a little bit of seven, exactly. Um, and he's he's very good. He's a good um, he's a good introductory villain for Batman, I think, because Batman is, you know, I I think. Are we going into spoilers? Or are we going to do? Shall we start spoilers then? Is it probably time for spoilers? Let's do some spoilers, Benjamin. You do one of your famous spoiler tunes. Yeah, so it's spoilers, spoilers. If you don't want to know about Batman, go to the can. Dum. Oh, very good. Um, that's poo. all I've got for today. But um, yeah, so 
This is an interesting one, Michael, because we're introduced to a very, very effective physical Batman. He's always doing a big punch on people and he's just walking through walls and getting shot and going, oh, I don't care, I've been shot. Yeah, so he's 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 not the Batman that we've come to know through games like the Arkham City game or Arkham um, Asylum or anything like that. There's no stealth to this Batman initially. No, there's a good bit of stealth. It Not, not initially. He walks into danger. Yeah, but out of the shadows, all mysterious, but, like. But out of the shadows and front on to guns and assault is not He's the bulletproof, Batman we've ben. come to know. He's bulletproof. So initially in this, we're introduced to a Batman who just goes in fist swinging. And there's a very yeah. good reason for that, because the, the characterization that Robert Pattinson brings to this character, both as Bruce Wayne and as Batman, is a very mm. angry man. Yeah, Rorschach. He's Rorschach. He's Rorschach, essentially. He's very angry. He has a deep, deep hatred for criminals in general. Yeah. He doesn't have any of the empathy that's come to define the Batman character overall, the kind of hidden empathy that appears every once in a while and endears Batman to everybody. Um, none of that is present. And so what we get initially is a big old angry murder machine. I, well, I don't think he kills anyone. Without the murder. Yeah, he doesn't do any killing. Benjamin, go on. He's Rorschach, but in bulletproof armor. But what bullet did you think armor. of the What did you think of the Rorschach uh, narration? So that's only used once. Um, nah, it's used a couple of times. Is it? Yeah, he goes October thirty first, the best time of the year to be a kicking people in the head. That's that's the start though. That's the start yeah at the start, the and then later on, later on he goes November thirtieth. Oh, November sixth. Another good, you, yeah. another good time to kick someone in the head and yeah. jump off. All right, so it happens maybe twice. He does it three or four times, and then he's like, "I have to find out who this is. What happened so, to my father?" So I did think that his did my father pay Sal Carbone? <laughs> Carbonara. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's there's a whole bunch of Batman mythos in this, Michael. Um, this is probably the most comic accurate. Um, kind of Batman we've ever seen on screen. We have the crime families that have plagued Gotham for for decades, Michael. We've got the Sal Falcones Carbone. and the Maronis and no, they're yeah, all mentioned. That's what I said. And, uh, yeah, the Carbonaras and the Taglatellis, you know, the, the oh, classic good, yeah. Italian mob families of Gotham. And what we're seeing, Michael, is is straight from the long Halloween comic book, uh, the kind of classic Batman story. It's the rise of the supervillain and the rise of the vigilante and how that is mucking up organized crime in Gotham City. Mm. Have you ever seen Gotham? Yeah. It's that. It's very Gotham. Mm. This whole movie is very Oh, it's it's a it's a better one. But Gotham walked so the Batman could run or glide or, you know, throw himself off a building. Wingsuit. Wingsuit. Because uh, wingsuits in it, Ben. But the best yeah, bit. So what we get, Michael, then it, because we have this kind of facing into danger head on Batman, what we get is a very interesting villain in the Riddler because the Riddler doesn't engage on a physical level at all. Yes, go on. Um, he is a puzzler, as we know. Um, he is uh, all about the mind, Michael, and, you know, hidden messages and metaphorical crimes, Michael. He's, he's uh, you know, doing doing the old broad strokes, Michael. He's, he's painting yeah. a big old picture for Batman to find. Hmm. Um, the, the Riddler really click, kind of aligns with a, a 2022, Michael, because what we have is, for lack of a better term, he's a, a far-right extremist. Oh, is that right? Uh, well, he is a little bit because he has his little YouTube following, his little TikTok following. He does. He likes to do a a, a a social media live, Michael. Yeah, lots of far left people do that too, Ben. What makes him a far right extremist? Uh, probably the fact that he actually has pipe bombs planted in places and engages in violent acts of uh, revolution. Oh, you've let your own politics show there, Ben. Benjamin. Yeah. yeah. Benjamin. Go on. Benjamin. What was his plan? <laughs> because this <laughs> so is my biggest the great complaint. Of the film. My biggest complaint about this film is that I am too dumb to understand what his plan was. And I would have been very happy, Ben, if when Sal Maroney was shot... Uh, um, Carmen Falcone, but yeah, go on. Yeah, that's the fella, yeah, Sal Maroney. When he was shot, yeah, I would have been very happy... Yeah. yeah, when he was shot right in the lasagna, Ben. I would have been... By the way, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, no, we've already said that. We've covered when that. When he was shot, one. yeah, I would have been very happy for the film to be over. 
I yeah. would have been very happy to have a climactic chase scene where Batman and Catwoman chase him down and then end up catching him. The scene in the the, the scene in the diner, Ben, spoiled in the trailer, obviously. But yes. the scene in the diner where they arrest him very peacefully and he's just this innocent looking little nerdy fella. Yeah. Perfect ending to that film. Yeah, it would have been it would have been grand because I, I think it would have also been a nice bit of symbolism for the Riddler. Like the Riddler doesn't actually care whether he gets caught or not. He just cares about mm. the message or the, the puzzle or, you know. And so he would go quietly. He'd just be like, okay, put me in Arkham. Yeah, grand. Yeah, 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 grand. You win. Yeah. And then, Ben, there's an unnecessary fifth act. Uh, then, Michael, uh, Matt Reeves was, was almost finished, I think. Uh, watching mm. the film and then he went and he watched Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises and he went oh I should have something <laughs> in a stadium someone said you have, you forgot Matt Reeves actor director director Matt Reeves you've forgotten to do a big action denouement and it's it's one of the weakest parts of the film for a couple of different reasons Michael oh number Ben one, no use uh, number one this film put so much effort into making it a Gotham story um, like the city is a character again for the first three acts I think it's fair to say we have the Iceberg <laughs> yeah. Lounge, 40 Below, you know, the crime and the socioeconomic quality of Gotham is laid bare. The city itself is a pretty interesting thing. It's very gothic. It's very strange. It's, it's Tim Burton's wet dream if you'd had the budget back in the day. You know, it's very good. Yeah, it's very good. And then, Michael, all of a sudden, it's like Matt Reeves pulls the camera out. We've had such a... Uh, a close film where we follow Batman like right down to the sound of his breath and the heartbeat and we're looking at the minutia of Gotham and how it works and how it takes and then all of a sudden it's like oh yeah let's do it during the daytime um, in a big old stadium and we'll have loads of people die and uh, it'll be good won't it big old stadium fight and there's explosions Michael and it turns out that Gotham is built in a basin for some reason oh we should have known that from the beginning yeah and it, it all floods in Michael yeah, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. It's it's like the whole film is it's about Detective Batman, Ben, as you yeah. were saying. For the whole film is about Detective Batman. It's very real world this. Yes. There's there's very little fantastical. The most fantastical thing might be his special contact lenses for taking photos or his grappling gun. <laughs> or his grappling gun or his wingsuit. Yeah. But all, you know, within the bounds of... Like, that's what makes it a superhero film, not 7-2. Yeah, exactly. Because he is yeah. kind of a badass and has weird things yeah. that he can do that other people can't. Exactly, yeah. But it's mostly a crime investigation film. But it's like they took 7. They took the film 7. They did, yeah. It's not as grim and gritty as 7. It's not as gross as 7 by any stretch of imagination. Once or twice but then it, they it, it, it crests that wave. But they put on the ending. They just copy-pasted the ending from Batman Begins. Oh, it was... Oh, very R rushing cool. around trains and uh, what were they doing? Why? Um, it really, it really botches the end of the film. I, it's very hard. <laughs> but to it explain. doesn't. In a way, it doesn't botch the end of the film because the film has already had a satisfying conclusion. Yeah, and then we've just tacked that on. And then they go, "Oh, he needs another plan." And it, Ben, what was the plan? Why? Why? What was? I think I don't get it. You know, it's it's very hard for Batman to shake the Joker. Um, in terms of the dark, you just the grab dark him down and give him an L shake. He's only a little. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of the Dark Knight, the 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 Batman villain on screen was revolutionised by Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, and we got the twitchy, neurotic, you know, aggressive character. There's no doubt that Paul Dano took a little bit of inspiration from Heath Ledger's Joker there. Um, it's very hard to separate those characters, so much so that they're becoming homogenous. Do you know what I mean? The Batman villain is a very set type of thing. Uh, a dark, brooding, unexpected, quiet yet serious menace. You know, mm. um, who occasionally has outbursts of unhinged mania. You know what I mean? Yeah, which was fine. I thought that was fine. But then in the end, they had to go and say, oh, we should probably make it also about internet groupthink and... Yeah, like so it's it's weird. Nerds, internet, internet group nerds think, being dangerous. Ma Matt Reeves takes a real crack at n new wave internet um, mm. cheapling. Yeah, it was dangerously close to being about incels. And I was just like, where did that come from? Because it's not earned. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's not earned. Like the initially, 
the Riddler is a lone killer with an axe to grind. And from Bath's point of view, he's very good. He's, he's, you know, he's so smart that he's able to plan these things miles in advance. And he has, you know, a big metaphor to sell. But then it's slowly revealed that, you know, he's very, you know, he wants to be part of a team. And he wants to, you know, he wants to be part of this internet culture. And he really appreciates them. But it, it's, it's very unearned, Michael. Because the plan was initially to expose Thomas Wayne. Yeah. And yeah. the corrupt nature of Gotham City. He does that. And then he's but like, then he also kind of doesn't. Yeah, but he, so he's basically successful in that because everything is exposed. Gotham is now aware that uh, Thomas Wayne's foundation, uh, the the renewal, as it's called, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. what a crock of shit that is. <laughs> Go on, yeah. And then suddenly the Riddler is like, oh yeah, and I want to kill a bunch of people. I want to kill a bunch of people as well. But that was never it because his his whole drive was fuck the elites. F- mm-hmm. Fuck the people who think they're better than the ordinary. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, but actually let's get all the ordinary people in a stadium and uh, give them an L shoot. And the mayor who's a black lady. And the mayor who's a black lady crusading for socioeconomic justice, Michael. Yeah, yeah, let's sort that out. Let's, let's strike let's a blow for less mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, Very good. Benjamin. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, I liked it and I'll see a sequel. Um, I think I, I think you're probably going to see it again, Michael. To be honest, I'm going to see it again tonight, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I know you're fucked. Um, but come here to me. Come here to me. Go on. Uh, what was I going to say to you? Well, you're probably going to say something about different Batman. Yeah, I was. Yeah, Michael, because this this Michael, as I said, is the most comic accurate Batman we've ever had on screen. Disagree. Okay, you're wrong, and that's fine. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not wrong, Ben. You, I'm not wrong. No, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. Go on, go I'm on, not make wrong. Your point I'm there. not wrong. Because make, make your we've point talked. There. The, we've talked about this before, Benjamin, and I made a very lovely metaphor where the Batman as a concept, he's like a a teardrop hitting a page. Oh, you did. I forgot about this. Remember that metaphor, this Ben? Joycey and fucking imagery that you yeah. chucked into our podcast. Yeah, yeah. So you have this just concept of Batman that dripped from the from the the writer's pen hit the page and splashed off and some of the splashes are bigger and more well founded and more well formed and some of them are just little flecks out to the side Ben and every aspect of Batman you you can't call one more comic accurate you could say something is more comic accurate to a particular comic okay but to use the term comic accurate suggests that the comics are coherent oh very well put Michael well you see Michael they're not coherent but we do get a uh, we do get a more comic book accurate Batman fuck you I'm not having this any other way this is, <laughs> yeah no this we don't we accurate. don't definitely don't um, we've, look we've had we've had the realistic take from Christopher Nolan um, this is more realistic no it isn't you're wrong yes it is this you're, is you're more wrong. realistic this is more realistic and grounded you're than wrong. the Christopher Nolan one <laughs> it is, is the most stylized version of Batman I've seen on screen outside of Tim Burton's Batman Timothy Burton Benjamin I disagree. I think this is the most realistic one. Okay, go on. Make your make your argument there for me very, very quickly. Well, it's entirely grounded in the real world. Okay. Um, okay, Gotham itself is pretty stylized. Yes. It's rainy New York. If if rainy New York and Chicago had a baby. Yes. Um, but the 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 Dark Knight world was just Chicago. You don't get more realistic than a city that exists an actual just a city but this is no I've I've, I've mixed up my own point there Benjamin, yes you have what I'm <laughs> saying what, what, I, what I'm saying is there's lots about this that's very grounded in reality like for example the fact that he can't be Bruce Wayne and Batman at the same time so all of this Batmaning about the place is is making Bruce Wayne go broke yeah which we've never seen before yeah and that was fantastic and makes so much sense yeah <laughs> Andy Serkis as Alfred is literally like Keep going like this. We're going to be broke, Master Wayne. We're going to like, be broke. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I want to go and punch people in the night. In the, in the night. <laughs> and during the night, I'm going to go and punch people in the head. Benjamin, he, yeah. it's, go on. What makes it stylized? Um, the suit, the villains, the accents, the setting of Gotham City, which is straight out of Batman, the animated series, the bizarre penguin, the phenomenal Riddler. Like, it, it's all... These are the versions of the characters that we have grown up with. These are... Ah, uh, no, they're not. Get out of here, Ben. This is this is nothing like Batman the Animated Series. Oh, Gotham. it's so like Batman the Animated Series. It Get isn't. Get out of it's, here. It is, it's a new interpretation of it, but it, uh, it certainly has influence from it. 
But where's the Zeppelins? There's, where's there's, the there's 1950s no Zeppelins, cars? Michael. There's but no Zeppelins. That red where's tone the ni- that pervades every single inch of this film is Batman the Animated Series. The New York mid-century accents that every villain for some bizarre Oi, reason has. what are you talking about <laughs> we're all from New York <laughs> it's amazing it's hey pretty great. lady get over here and give me the Peter Skarsgård was in it for some reason he's there yeah he's, he's Peter Skarsgård as the penguin as Colin Farrell um, it, it's amazing as a film but Michael it wouldn't be possible go on if it wasn't for everything that came before and there are so many elements from the comics that are in this movie but there's also elements of alternate Batmans from the comics um, laced through this particular film well hit me up with some examples Ben hype hype so one of the one of, <laughs> even you're ashamed of that one I can see you just... oh my god I don't I don't know the last time I physically cringed yeah. but I think that was it that was the face of a man who was like what have I become um, <laughs> but come here to me come here to me yes. one of the huge influences I think on the suit Michael is Gotham by Gaslight Right, go on. Gotham That's by Gaslight is Gotham. a Victorian reimagining from the Elseworlds series in DC. Um, and it's it's set during the time of Jack the Ripper. Mm. And it, it makes the notion that, it, it sorry, it posits the notion that Jack the Ripper actually existed in Gotham and that there is a version of the Batman that exists in this Gotham. It's called Gotham by Gaslight, obviously, because electricity isn't around. Um, no, there's no, there's no electricity yet. But a huge influence on... The Batman realizing his privilege, the Batman, the Bat suit is very mm. heavily based, I think, on the Gotham by Gaslight suit, especially the cowl and the way that the cape sits more like a coat. Um, I like that. Than anything else. Yeah, so it's it's mm. far more like a coat. That is straight out of Gotham by Gaslight, Michael. That does turn out to be on purpose as well, which I liked. Uh, yes, it's very much on purpose. Because um, it was the wingsuit. Because of the wingsuit. He has a little inflatable wingsuit that he hits a button for and he's like... Zzzz. I wasn't just the button, he had to pull a few straps he had to pull as a well. Few straps. Very realistic. He was, he was exiting the aircraft and ensuring that his own device was securely fastened, Michael. Yes. It's the whole thing. Um, I also like that the Batman is afraid of heights in that scene where he's just like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I've gone out on top of a building. What a stupid idea. <laughs> that wasn't great. <laughs> yeah, I funny. thought the suit was very reminiscent of the later Arkham games. Yeah. When he started getting a bit more armoured. So I think I think the armoured suit... The suit's a character in this. I mean, Batman's dead about 85 times over in this film, if not for the suit. Yeah. Um, it, like, he gets shot a lot. He gets shot a lot. And it's, it's quite... I suppose in that sense, it is quite realistic, Michael. Because Batman... There's no way Batman can see every gun that's pointed at him. No, he's always getting into situations with too many guns. And very often, Batman gets caught off guard from behind, where he's like shot mm-hmm. in the back. And if it wasn't for the suit being like, I got this, we're good, it's fine. Yeah, right. um, oh, it wouldn't go very well, would it? No. no. Yeah, no, he'd be dead probably. Um, so that, that is very reminiscent of the Arkham games. It, it's that heavily layered armoured suit um, that provides all kinds of... Um, all kinds of protection. The cowl seems to be reinforced several times over. Yeah, make giving him a big square Lego head. You know, um, in terms of his kind of brutal style, Michael, it's very reminiscent of Flashpoint Batman. Go on. Uh, Flashpoint Thomas Batman Wayne. is is one of the most interesting Batman to come out in the last f- in the last Few twenty years. years. I'm going to say the last. Uh, sorry, the last ten. 10 years I can say 10 years he came out no he came out in 2011 the last 11 years Michael um, it's an alternate Batman from another timeline where Bruce Wayne died in the alley um, mm. and Thomas Wayne becomes the Batman uh, but more interestingly than that Michael Martha Wayne has a psychotic break after losing her son and she becomes the Joker uh oh so Martha Wayne is the Joker Thomas Wayne is the Batman obviously if you're dealing with that timeline, Michael, you're going to have a much older Batman because Thomas Wayne was a grown-ass man when his trauma struck. Um, so what you have is a much more brutal version of Batman uh, known as Flashpoint Batman. And Flashpoint Batman is... The the way they sell it is Thomas Wayne was a surgeon and worked with like a ruthless efficiency. And that's the kind of Batman that we get in Flashpoint Batman has no qualms with killing people whatsoever um, he'll kill you as soon as look at you so a Flashpoint Batman is I, I, he's a little bit like the Punisher if you wore a bat suit um, mm. and I think in the way that he I think in the way that the Batman fights in Matt Reeves Batman 
I think, again, heavily influenced by that much darker tone. Um, one of the things I really like about the film is that this is early days Batman, who's not really sure what he should be doing. The The key line, I think, from the first act of the film is, I don't know if I'm making a difference. Mm. And he's very clearly not, Michael, because he says, I'm so limited. I don't know how to, you know, I have to choose my crimes carefully. I have to, you know... I have to fight where I'll do the most good, but it's too late because yeah. there's so many crimes happening at the same time, which again, very realistic, Michael. You're right. But also, but maybe hopefully at the same time, the rumours about me and the fear that I might be out there stops a few crimes. So this is the first time, Michael, that I think I've seen a Batman where the fear is such an important element to it. No, no. Remember in the start of the Batman film, he says, tell your friends. And Batman. Yeah. And then he throws the, Batman off the roof. But it doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> Whereas in he this even one, arrest them, ben. we get, we get, light spoilers again here, we get three simultaneous crimes happening at the same time. Mm. And the, the end point for all three mini vignettes is criminals looking into the darkness and not sure if Batman is there. And that he fear be being like so powerful that it actually deters them from continuing. Ben, why were those first gang of lads dressed as Jokers? They're dressed as Skellingtons, Michael, and I think they were dressed as Jokers, Joker-esque things so they could sell a trailer. To give you a little wink. Yeah, a little, a little, eh, gotcha. So I think there's a lot of that in it, Michael. I think there's a lot of Batman beyond here. Um, beyond what? The the Terry McGuinness Batman, Michael, from the future. Um, mm. I think there's a lot of a young Batman finding his feet, um, a young Batman coming to understand the world. I think... Funnily enough, the, the eye tech that Batman uses to record everything. Yes, um, that's why he's so, such a good detective, Ben. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, because he doesn't miss anything, Michael, because it's all in the eyeball. Exactly, he's recorded it all. I thought everything from the, the, the weird analog feel to that technology, the weird red tone to all the technology. I just really enjoyed that visually. I thought it was really good. But it's very reminiscent, Michael, of um, Terry McGuinness's Batman being spoken through his ear by Bruce Wayne. Mm. Bruce Wayne sits in the cave and watches everything in the Batman Beyond series I think there's a lot of that there um, in terms of looking back and having a look and, and reviewing the tape so to speak Michael as they say yeah and the assistance I think uh, one of the one of the biggest influences though Michael and this is what we're going to finish on here is Batman Earth won the comic I think undoubtedly 90% of the new Batman film is based on that comic so what has that been in 2012 uh, Jeff Johns and Frank oh it's going to escape me Frank Oz uh, no Frank Grillo oh uh, no I really like him as an artist Gary Frank sorry Gary Frank um, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank uh, got the okay to do Batman Earth 1 and Batman Earth 1 is set on an, an alternate Earth yeah, Earth, Earth one. one. And it's incredibly realistic. Okay. Go on. The, the emphasis of Batman Earth One is what if Bruce Wayne didn't travel all over the world and train with monks and do all this stuff? What if his grizzled SAS veteran butler mm -hmm. was just his his mentor? What if what if he learned all these things from an ex special forces guy? Yeah. And just applied them to the real world? And we got that a was hint in of that in Gotham. We, yeah. we get a small hint of that in Gotham but nobody really cares about young Bruce Wayne because it's not that interesting um, Benjamin what about the Pennyworth TV series uh, yeah that that thing that lasted two episodes and I think was then Did pulled anyone watch from that? It. I don't think anybody's ever watched that that feels like a Mandela moment seen... to me you know the you know the Mandela effect you know where like yes. people remember an alternate timeline I'm convinced Alpha Pennyworth never effect. happened what is it the Mandela effect oh yeah sorry I'm thinking of that because one of the great examples that they give is Nelson Mandela being dead and not dead in, in different people's yeah, remembrance. No, I, I, was, I was doing a bit where I was saying that I thought it was different than what you were saying. No, but I think it is the Mandela effect. I'm not sure. No, that was a, that's, anyway. Anyway. Uh, on Earth 1, Michael, it's incredibly realistic. Um, a huge plot line from the movie is in Earth 1, and that is that Martha Wayne is an Arkham. Not, oh, yeah. I uh, forgot about that. So that's huge. Um, in the concept because the two founding families of Gotham according to this timeline and the Earth 1 comic book timeline is that Arkham's and Wayne's are the founding families of Gotham mm. and one of the one of the untouchable things for a very long time in Batman canon was Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne 
They were these deified kind of wonderful parents, not a brack on them. And then uh, Jeff Johns was like, yeah, but what if they were dickheads? Mm. And, you know, Bruce has the wrong idea. So Earth One is all about Bruce Wayne discovering that his family legacy is a bit poor, a um, bit awful. <laughs> and it's also about him tackling organized crime as a man in a bat suit. Um who is bizarre and he has to fight in this very realistic military way because he didn't travel around the world and learn Taekwondo from ancient Tibetan monks or anything like that. He doesn't have did, any of that. Uh, where did the Tibetan monks learn Taekwondo? Uh, yeah, well, it's, you know, it's DC Universe, so anywhere, really. Oh, yeah, Probably yeah, down they, below they did Hawaii, a, they, Michael. They did a semester in Korea. They did a semester in Korea. Classic Tibetan Taekwondo. And uh, yeah, I've probably revealed a lot about my lack of knowledge on martial arts there, Michael. But anyway, <laughs> um, and it is a look at this man trying to tackle a problem much bigger than him while uncovering the, the sinister elements of Gotham. It is also a wonderful, it is also definitely the basis for the Jim Gordon Batman team up that we see throughout so much of the Batman. Jim Gordon is very not very well developed in the film, is he? Not not very well developed. He's not really developed. He's not really a character per se. He's a grim and gritty cop. That's he's fully formed. That's what he is. He, yeah, he's just. We a leave cop. the we leave the film with the same character who we came into the film with for Jim Gordon. Yeah, it, there's not a lot of character development there. We might see it in the future, Michael, if we get a sequel. Fingers crossed. Um, although DC's track record on getting films out is beyond me at this point. I don't I don't think we'll ever see many more things but that whole relationship is defined including the key scene where batman punches him in the face to escape police officers yeah, it's very good that's straight from earth one the comic book um so that's it really um i absolutely love the film i will probably go see it again in imax at some point michael um, oh very good because very big visually very stunning film uh, but ladies and gentlemen come here to me benjamin oh, benjamin what, what, what we're just going to do our slightly smaller regular segment hop up on the discord oh, yeah, yeah okay you're going you do hop up on the discord there. Hop on. ben i've been up on the discord benjamin good. i tell you what the discord is still hopping about spider-man no way home why i, I it seems to be ben it's a pop culture touchstone moment because uh, a lot of people have seen it and a lot of people don't like mary jane played by kirsten dunst Oh yeah, that's fair. Okay, <laughs> a lot of not a lot of love for Mary Jane, Ben. The other thing, the other big topic on our on our Discord this week was what the hell is Jeremy Renner up to? Oh, live, laugh, love, Renner. <laughs> live, laugh. Jeremy Renner has turned live, laugh, love, Ben. And I tell you what, he more and more looks like he's cosplaying as you every day. I I think he is. I think he's gearing up for the the new movie, uh, a podcast too far. Uh, look at the life <laughs> of Benjamin Colby, the life and time of Benjamin, Benjamin Colby. Perhaps my favourite thing that has happened on the podcast this week is that on, on the Discord this week is that all of our regular podcast users have all kind of or all of our regular Discord crew have all simultaneously decided to call him Jeremy Benner in future. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know how I feel about that, lads, but um look if it makes <laughs> if it makes the listeners happy. Yeah, look at him. Look at oh my god, Ben. I mean it's like a it's like a one for one. <laughs> Look at him there. I'm not oh, sure how I feel about like, this. Uh, I will like be doing a Hawkeye mirror. cosplay <laughs> at some point, though. Look at him. Look at him. Look at you and look at him. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. Look, they are uncomfortably similar. Mm. Anyway. What was the caption again? Give us a read there. I think it just says, I'm Jeremy Benner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ladies yes. and gentlemen, that's the Discord. You can hop up on there, too. Check it out in the link below. Um, where you might get name dropped on the podcast, or you might just get mentioned in passing as a as an as a uh, an amorphous blob of listeners. You never know. <laughs> it's, it's really, Take that, listeners! It's really up to us. Um, but come here to me. You can find us in a couple of different places and let us know what you thought of Matt Reeves the Batman. Uh, you can find us on the interwebs at www.shomrabiog.com. S e o m r a b e a g dot com. It means tiny room in Irish. It does indeed, Michael. It does indeed. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Sherlock Listen Podcast. It means Sherlock sure Listen, but in English. You can find us on Twitter if you really feel like it at Listen Sure. Yeah, well, we're always on Twitter. We're always putting hot takes up there. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can just get in touch with us on that Discord. It's bloody great. Uh, you can join us um, if you haven't had enough of us, ladies and gentlemen. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes there's just not enough hours in the day of uh, Michael and Benjamin. You can check out mm -hmm. our other podcast, Collecting Issues, the bi-weekly comic book book, comic book club. club. Uh, yes. Next, uh, this Wednesday, this very Wednesday. What's it about? Where we'll be taking a look at Cucullin. Hmm. 
Cucullin. I think it's called Celtic Warrior, but we've said this a few times now. Uh, we, yeah, I think we uh, <laughs> probably have. Ladies and gentlemen, you can join us next week. Next week. What's happening next we'll week? We're taking a look at the topic. Why Why is everything so grim and gritty? Oh, is that what we're doing? We're not doing an Irishman's Spalls episode for Patrick's Day? Is, it, is, that, is that that time... Uh, it's that time of year, Ben. Oh, it's that time of year. So what we're actually doing next week, ladies and gentlemen, is an Irish Pixar pitch. Because oh, are we? Okay, very country, good. Every country, every other country has gotten their cultural representation. Now, Colombians have Encanto. Bloody Mexicans yeah. have Coco. Yeah. Fr- Icelandic people have Frozen. <laughs> where, where's our Where's our culture? It's Norway. Is it? Was it Norway? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's Norway. Scandinavia. Sure, look, they're all the same, aren't they? They're all the same, aren't they? Scandin- that's not what, what you're trying said. to get at that's here. That's not what I said. Um, <laughs> that's what you're getting at. But we're going to do an Irish Pixar pitch so that we actually oh, make some good. money off this podcast and Pixar will actually uh, buy, buy it from us. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be good. All right. Bye bye. I'll right, have to watch the Batman again. See you. See you bloody next week. I'm going to see Batman again, but not at midnight this time. You. <laughs> that was very strange. <laughs>